Break out the box of Kleenex tissues, Amazon investors. Starting Monday, Amazon Life for an AWS wizard, Andy Jassy, will officially assume the CEO position from space fan Jeff Bezos. So what does the change in leadership mean for a stock nearing $3,500 a share? Anthony Chacumba is Loop Capital Managing Director, and he joins us now. Anthony, always good to speak with you here. So you're staying uh, pretty bullish on Amazon. You have a, what, $3,775 price target on the stock. Why are you staying so optimistic, even with this big change at the top? Sure, that's a great question. I mean, first off, we just don't really think you're going to see any major strategic or operational shifts um, with Amazon, with this transition uh, from Jeff Bezos to Andy Jassy. You have to remember, Andy has been uh, with Amazon since 1997, and he's worked very closely uh, with Jeff Bezos. He was his technical advisor for a while. Um, he co-founded AWS with, with Jeff. He's on the S team. Um, so I just don't really think that we're gonna see a wholesale shift in strategy. The other thing you have to remember is that Jeff Bezos is the largest Amazon shareholder with a 10% stake. He's also going to be uh, executive chairman, assuming he makes it back from space, okay? Um, and so he's still going to have a lot of influence um, at the company. And then finally, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And with the, you know, these record numbers that we're seeing from Amazon pretty much quarter after quarter after quarter, you know, why would it make any sense for Brandy to make any change uh, in the strategy? So we don't really expect any major changes. And, you know, along those lines, Anthony, something you flagged in, in your note to us is, I mean, look at the last several years of, of Bezos' arc. He's clearly been a little bit, I mean, it would seem he's been a little bit less engaged over the last, maybe it's called three years than he would have been 10 years ago. And so is that maybe a, a reason investors to say, you know, hey, this isn't, this isn't such a big deal, even though the, the formal handover, uh, again, does happen this week? I think that's 100% correct. So, you know, look, I don't know exactly, you know, when the transition started, but, you know, he's been a very, very different CEO the last several years than he was, you know, in the early days of Amazon. I mean, you're seeing him go more Hollywood, right? He's showing up at these Hollywood premieres and at the Golden Globes and at the Oscars. You know, he's got this, um, you know, new girlfriend. I guess it's not all that new at this point. Uh, it seems like he's more and more involved, um, you know, with Blue Origin. Um, he's reportedly building this um, super yacht. So clearly, um, this has been a transition that has been years in the making. Anthony, then what is what is Andy Jassy's biggest challenge? You know, I think that uh, the biggest challenge for Andy, I think there's going to be two challenges. Um, one is, you know, look, he has been laser focused on AWS for the last several years, and it's done a spectacular job. I mean, AWS is I mean, I make the argument is one of the most powerful tech companies um, in the world. Um, but he's never really had to focus nearly as much attention on the rest of Amazon's business, right? And this is a company that uh, is increasingly diverse. They're doing a lot of different things that he hasn't been as involved in. The second um, challenge is just going to be dealing with the you know, the regulatory, not, not necessarily regulatory, but the, you know, antitrust, the gr growing antitrust animus um, towards Amazon. Obviously, uh, Lena Khan is uh, FTC commissioner now. I mean, she very famously wrote um, this, you know, Yale Law Review article, you know, very anti-Amazon. And it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. But that's one of the few things that Republicans and Democrats agree on is, uh, is that there needs to be more oversight and regulation of big tech. So I think that that will be a challenge for him as well. And along those lines, Anthony, I'm curious as an analyst, how you are thinking about those risks today. Is it something you have in your model? Is it something you're, you're kind of monitoring? And at what point might that be a more material consideration here rather than just, you know, something fun for the media to talk about? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you know, look, it's not something that I'm factoring into the way I think about Amazon. I think it's really tough to do that, quite frankly, because there still is so much uncertainty. Um, I mean, just earlier this week, you know, you, you saw Facebook, you know, with this big, um, you know, uh, uh, court case that went their way, and, and which makes me, you know, think that once again, um, you know, any type of breakup of big tech is it's probably many, many years, um, you know, in the offing, if it's even going to happen at all. The other thing is, you know, I'd make the argument that, you know, a breakup of Amazon would not necessarily be a bad thing. Um, you know, I, you know, I talked about AWS, which, which Andy, like I said, uh, you know, co-founded and ran for many years. I mean, you know, I think there's a credible argument to be made that, um, 
AWS is not being fully valued by the market as part of Amazon. So I'm not sure, you know, if, you know, worst case scenario, Amazon's broken up, that would be a bad thing from a shareholder value creation perspective. Anthony, a little more near term in nature. We've seen some reports over the past few days of a disappointing Amazon Prime Day. Are, have you had to lower your estimates at all? Uh, no, not at all. Um, you know, look, I, I think that, uh, I mean, first off, you know, remember these are, you know, uh, um, you know, estimates, right? I mean, we haven't got any um, hard numbers uh, from the company um, itself. And we're just talking about a 48 hour period um, out of a, you know, a 90 day or so quarter. Um, so it's not something, honestly, that I'm very concerned about. Anthony, while we have you here, you, you were the first analyst that we talked to in the street that dropped coverage on GameStop. Uh, and you really, I mean, just, this is ridiculous. It's hard, you just can't cover this company. But now that they have a new management team, a new board, are you inclined to, to relaunch coverage on a GameStop or you just really continue to sit on the sidelines? Absolutely not. I have. I will never ever. Uh, I'll say this on this on this on this show. I will never cover GameStop ever again. I mean, there's just there's just no point. I mean, look, the stock is down from four hundred and eighty three dollars to I guess two hundred dollars. Um, I still don't think it's any it's worth anything even remotely close to that. Um, I, I guess it's it's a nice segue from Amazon because they've hired a ton of Amazon executives. But I just keep coming back to you know the um, you know the the, the doctors you know prescription doesn't match the disease. I mean, you know, Amazon uh, is a great uh, e-commerce retailer. There's no question about that. But GameStop's primary problem is that more and more um, gamers are downloading video games. And so you can have a much better website, but it's really not going to make any difference. Uh, it, I mean, it's like going to the doctor and saying, doctor, I've got stage four lung cancer. And he gives you a prescription for erectile dysfunction. I mean, it just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. <laughs> All right, uh, that's Anthony. Thanks so much for that. Um, always fun to have you on. Really appreciate the time, as always. Uh, Anthony just come up with Loop Capital. Appreciate the comments on uh, Amazon, and I, I know we'll be in touch, Anthony. Have a great weekend.